Hi friends, thank you so much for joining me in my workout today. So as you can see here, I have officially swapped out Buffalo Bar Squats as my main squat and replaced um, my main squat with SSB Squats. So normally I would have done paused Buffalo Bar Squats today. Today I did paused SSB Squats. I will still have one workout that includes Buffalo Bar Squats. Um, so I kind of had to just guesstimate on where my numbers would be today based off how good my non-paused SSB squats felt the last time just because I uh, put the bar the right direction now uh, and everything felt pretty good. So I'll just get into a few things that I want to talk about. First, the airing of grievances. I got a lot of problems with you people. No, I'm just kidding. Um, anyways, I do want to air my grievances, but not with you people. First off, two days in a row, I have been honked at for yielding to the, to the vehicles I'm supposed to yield at. So this happened two times in a row. I'm seeing that a car is going to turn and that I am approaching the yield sign. If there were no cars coming, I could go. I don't think people know. Nobody in this town knows how yield sign works. So I was at the yield sign and I noticed the cars were going to turn into the lane. So then I yielded. And then people behind me, the big truck behind me, started aggressively honking. Honk, honk, honk. And I start screaming in my car, even though it's like they can't hear me. But I feel like I am I'm a little bit of road rage. So they start honking me. So then I start honking at them, even though they're behind me. My car is saying, screw off. Uh, leave me alone. How could they not see what was going on? They're a big truck. Um, so they could see. It's like, if I went, buddy, then it would cause an accident. Why are you honking at me? The yield sign. And it happened the day before as well. Um, the aggressive honk, honk, honk. Even though I am yielding in the appropriate way. And then when the guy, when I finally left, um, I could finally go. The traffic was done. And I went and then the guy sped up from behind me and went in front of me and gave me the finger and it's like I'm, I'm yielding at a yield sign when there's vehicles coming i can't understand this um but what's interesting is that it happened two days in a row <clears throat> so my throat hurts a little bit from screaming <laughs> just screaming in my car for nobody to hear um so people need to stop that uh, if you don't understand how yielding works then you need to go back and take a learner's test so that's the first grievance that I want to air. Uh, next, moving on, I want to be uh, open with something because I'm always open with things. And I think this is really important. This is a very important thing um, that I think um, maybe I don't know really how commonly it's discussed or if more people try to keep it somewhat more hidden. Uh, this is very, very true in obviously in the fitness community um and especially for people that are very very absorbed and very very involved in it um not just uh, the average gym goers that just like to keep their heart healthy that kind of thing but the people that are kind of very i would say neurotic about it um there could be some other things going on especially when it comes to mm, self-acceptance and body acceptance and um just disordered thinking, I would say, is probably very, very common in the obsessive fitness world. Um, and obviously, I've talked a lot about this, about OCD and all this kind of stuff and anxiety. But what I have not really talked about too, too much is, but I guess it could be somewhat apparent by how obsessive I am about my workouts, is the body image issues uh, that I have, that I've had I would say I feel like it's been like my whole life um, but obviously it's more into my teenage years and <clears throat> with obviously with having I say the word obviously too much some things are not obvious so I'm not going to keep saying obviously stop saying that word Jen uh, moving on I well I had a son obviously <laughs> I just said obviously now I don't know how I don't know how to say sentences without saying the word obviously hmm that's interesting I had a son at far too young age I was only 19 okay and, well, I got pregnant at 19, but I think I was 20 by the time he was done cooking. <laughs> and I already had body image issues prior to this. But after that, 
it really uh, aggravated an already very sensitive situation for my body image issues. And I mean, still to this day, like I can't stand the sight of my stomach and it causes a lot of insecurities, especially when it comes to men, because I think they think I'm going to look one way because they would have no idea being that I'm a fit, you know, pretty s slender, I guess, or muscular built person that I'm not going to have the most disgusting stomach in the world. In my mind, I do. And I have this and that's like this uh, facade, I suppose that, um, you know, I guess it would be <clears throat> similar to people that maybe stuff their bra or something or those or if they have the fake bums. I don't really know what those look like. Those BBLs. I don't know what those look like without pants on. Maybe they look fine. Anyways, if I feel it's like an illusion where it's like, oh yeah, like I am presenting this facade. I'm a very fit person, but little did you know that if we were to become intimate and you were to see my stomach, you would be repulsed. And that is how my brain thinks and works all the time. And so it's very, very hard for me to put myself out there. I think I'm going to be in a situation where I might be with a guy or I start to like a guy, I immediately hate my stomach even more. The second I start liking a guy, I immediately hate my stomach even more because I think that there is no way he will ever be sexually attracted to me if he were to actually see what my stomach looks like. And I know, obviously I know, obviously, I know this is disordered. This is how I think, this is how I have thought for years and years and years and years. It doesn't go away. Um, no matter how much I try to say, like, girl, you're rocking, you're awesome, you look good. None of that stuff changes the second I like a guy. Um, it's all immediately, like, my stomach is so disgusting. Or uh, just me seeing it in the mirror, going in the shower, it's like, oh, that's that's freaking disgusting. I was going to cuss. <clears throat> that's freaking disgusting. And there are times when I don't have that dialogue um, because I'm too distracted by something else. And But that kind of thing, it, it will immediately be there and tied in with my self-worth my body image and all this kind of stuff and that is why when people say what is that thing around your waist um what is that thing around your waist and uh, the assumption maybe it'd be uh that i'm trying to be sexy or something or the assumption that i have back problems a lot of people think it is a back brace of some kind uh i don't have it i'm very very lucky um i've never had back problems i've never had back pain uh back injury i've never had any of that kind of thing i guess the only thing that i have is that my back gets tired when I bend over too much for heavy bent over rows after I've just done heavy high rep deadlifts. Can you imagine that? That's that's the only struggles I face with my back. So no, I don't wear this because of my back. I wear it because I'm very insecure about my body. I'm insecure about my stomach. And I'll, I want to cover up and hide and squeeze away the thing that I'm the most disgusted by. And uh, that's, that's just the way it is. And I guess um, just the assumption that I'm wearing it for a different reason and then maybe giving advice you know about things I might need to change because if I'm having back problems blah blah so it's the assumption is well now you're making me now I feel like I have to address this um and no it's not like I think it's probably better that I eventually talk about it. I think it's better to be open but uh than to just pretend like this uh, in my head does not exist because again it just creates like maybe a false narrative or a false uh, representation of the things that go on in my head when you see somebody, uh, especially maybe if you're new or if you have body image issues yourself and you see, obviously I'm not, so obviously I'm not somebody that has a super inflated ego, but there could be people that watch me and think, wow, like I wish I could be that muscular. I wish I could be that strong. Um, I envy this. I wish I could attain that. I'll never be this good. As I know, I compare myself to others. Others may compare themselves to me, but it's better to say there's this dialogue in my head where there's certain aspects of my body that um, disgust me and that create a lot of disordered thinking to the point where it's like I'm afraid to eat rice <laughs> because I always have the feeling that I am fat because the thing that disgusts me is my stomach, which is the guilt, I guess, of the feeling of fatness is always in my stomach. It's not like I just feel fat in my thighs. I don't care if I have big thighs. I care that my stomach disgusts me. But it's very important, I think, to be honest about these kinds of things. I idolize different lifting women, and um, you just think that they're accepting. Um, but if they were, then they probably wouldn't be torturing themselves in the gym all the time. Um, 
And I don't know, I guess it's just good to be honest about this. And I wanted to touch on it because people have asked me what the hell the thing is around my waist. Um, but there you have it. Have a great day.